Secretary Pete, we thought weeks ago that Santa would not be here for Christmas. We wouldn't be getting our gifts. That didn't happen. Is that because of what you did to address the supply chain or because retailers got in front of it and we ordered our gifts early? Well, it's because workers, business leaders, and this administration stepped up and uh, worked hard to make sure that we had a good holiday season. Uh, look, this was, uh, this was a tough situation. Off the charts demand combined with supply that was seeing a lot of issues impacted by the pandemic, but uh, really, really encouraged by the progress that was made. Uh, like you said, I mean, it was just a couple of months ago, we were seeing headlines that would have made you think uh, Christmas was basically canceled this year. And uh, now the, the shelves are stocked. In fact, uh, a lot of of the, the large stores are reporting they have higher inventory levels than last year. The Retail Federation is predicting all-time best year ever for sales. Uh, and most importantly, families are uh, looking forward to gathering together when last year uh, so many, in, including mine, uh, had our, our, our family gatherings over a screen. Um, you know, th so much has, has uh, uh, changed. So much is yet to be done. Uh, but when it comes to the supply chain work to get goods where they need to be, our ports and the workers there, our, our trucks and the drivers who drive them, have moved a record number of goods this holiday season. And that reflects everybody working together, everybody stepping up to the plate. Well, we did get all of our presents delivered, but we paid up to do so. Inflation is still a really big issue. I know you're looking into price gouging from some businesses and industries, businesses that are just jacking up prices because they can. But here's the thing. Demand is up. Supply is down. They can charge more. That's how it works. So what can you really do about it? Well, the, the way I would put it is demand is up, supply is up, but not by enough to keep up with demand. And there are holes in our supply, which is where you see some of these issues most impacting availability or prices. What can we do about it? First of all, making sure when you do have a case of gouging or any unfair business practices that the administration is ready to stand with consumers. And, and you see that in everything from uh, the, the president's uh, request that the Federal Trade Commission look into uh, issues uh, around uh, the, the price of gasoline uh, to the day to day work work of uh, so many agencies, including mine, making sure that consumers are treated fairly by companies. Uh, now, we have seen that that upward pressure on prices uh, leading to uh, you know, a, a real impact on families, which is why we continue to believe in the president's economic vision about lowering costs. Uh, remember, despite unified Republican opposition in the Senate, uh, we are continuing to push for lowering the cost of insulin, lowering the cost of housing, lowering the cost of child care, lowering the cost of electricity electric vehicles, something I'm very excited about, because I think it'll make a big difference to families being able to buy into the fuel savings that come with EV ownership. That's the Build Back Better agenda, and we're going to keep pushing for it. Well, what is pushing for it going to look like? Because a week ago, you said this thing is going to pass. Joe Manchin has made it clear it's not going to, not in its current form. So besides just being enthusiastic and backing it, what's the next move? Look, this is how complex major legislation works. There are uh, ba there's a back and forth process. There are good days and bad days. Uh, there can be a long and winding road. But I continue to believe that we're going to get this done. We're going to continue pushing and, and shaping and making it happen uh, because the American people are ready for it. And, uh, you know, I can't speak to the exact legislative uh, moment or vehicle, uh, but I can speak to the urgency of the need and the fact that at the end of the day, most Americans and I think uh, uh, deep down, uh, most legislators uh, want to find a way to get this done. But do you think we've reached the point? Point where it's going to be build back better or is it time to cut this thing up and pass individual bills you know legislative strategy is uh something that I'm going to leave to, to the people who do it all day for a living. What I know is that each one of those individual elements is worthwhile, and the package is a good one, uh, a great one, as is the infrastructure package that we're implementing as we speak. I'm excited about the, the Build Back Better agenda, but of course, my colleagues and I are also getting down to work on the historic legislation that the president signed. Uh, this law, I, I think Americans are just beginning to understand the, the scope and the scale of what it means in their communities. And that, that work continues as, as we sprint through the tape for uh, 2021 and get ready for next year. In fact, next year we're going to be announcing new port grant availability. But today uh, we're going to be announcing what we did with the dollars that we had. Over $240 million going to everything from major uh, investments for capacity expansion at those West Coast ports that everybody's been seeing on the news and, and reading about in the paper, all the way to inland waterways and, and ports in the Midwest that make a big difference for things 
tools like getting goods off of barges and onto trucks. Uh, we're supporting that today. We're going to be supporting that in a big way tomorrow thanks to this bill. You mentioned holiday retail sales are expected to break records. There is all sort of very positive economic data when we look back at the last year. So I want to ask you about the White House's announcement extending the pause on paying back student loans. I know this is not part of your job, but I want to talk about messaging from the administration. You keep telling us, and it's true, this is a winning economy. Then why do something like this? It's the kind of thing you do when the economy is in crisis, and we're not. Well, look, nothing about our situation as a country is simple, and the same is true when it comes to the economy. We have record low levels of uh, claims for unemployment. We have record economic growth under this president. We are seeing all kinds of incredibly encouraging signs and, and a payoff to the extraordinary work that's been done by this administration, by, by workers, by leaders in business. But that doesn't mean this is some kind of mission accomplished moment. Of course, there is still a lot that is uh, impacting families. There there's a lot of disruption going on. That's going to continue in some way, shape, or form but as what's long as change, the pandemic does. What's going to change in the next few months that's going to impact student loans? It's like you're just kicking the can down the road. You're going to cancel the student well, debt or not? Part of what we know is that, uh, you know, people's ability to respond to economic conditions is impacted by the pandemic and nobody has a crystal ball. But what we do have are specific tools for fighting the pandemic, namely vaccines and boosters, which is why our administration and the president continues to lead on making sure that every American uh, has access and has good information about why that's needed. And of course, now, uh, as we see this variant, uh, making sure that Americans have access to testing as well. All right. Secretary Pete, thank you so much for joining us. Merry Christmas to you and your new family. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Great to be with you. You too.